Hello, hello everybody. Hope you're all doing really well. Uh, well, you can't go to Scotland without photographing some ancient castle. So this morning we're at uh, Castle Stalker, which is not far from Bala, 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 <laughs> Bala Hulish. Sorry, I had to ask my friend Paul here. <laughs> Bala Hulish. A uh, beautiful area. Now, the weather since uh, uh, yesterday or two days ago uh, has been not so great. Uh, rain, drizzle, you know, the usual stuff in Scotland, which is kind of what I was expecting. So we've had a bit of a late start this morning. It's uh, about 11 o'clock and the sun's trying to come out. So the light on the castle right now is actually not too bad. Uh, you know, coming from Canada, we don't get too many castles in Canada, so this is uh, quite a, a neat thing to photograph for me. So, usual thing, trying to find a nice foreground to go with the castle, other than just photographing, you know, a castle. Uh, this is quite a special one though, it looks like someone still lives here. Hey Lord! There's, um, I think there's glass in the windows and there's a flag, so... It's not really the place where I'd want to live, a bit uh, isolated, and it'd be a real drag, uh, if you're going grocery shopping and you forgot something because <laughs> you have to take a boat to get from it. But uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. So I'm gonna look for a foreground. Uh, the tide's out, which is nice. There's some uh, reflections here, but I'm not sure if they're gonna work or not. I might even try something with a, like a 10 stop ND to really smooth things out, see if that works. And uh, the clouds, it's quite nice because there's texture in the clouds, so that really helps a lot. If it was just a, a plain gray sky, then uh, it probably wouldn't work so well. All right, I'll uh, set up my tripod and see what I can find. Okay, who am I kidding? Uh, actually, the light wasn't <laughs> wasn't very good at all. It was rather flat. Uh, in situations like this, uh, especially landscapes, uh, it's really helpful if you have something going on with the clouds, some beams of light, or just something more interesting uh, hitting your subject, in this case, the, the castle. Now, the clouds in the background were really nice, but if you look at the raw file here, you can see that uh, it's just not that interesting. Uh, even though the castle is a cool uh, building, it really needs uh, something dramatic happening with it to, to make this into a great uh, color photograph. So I decided to go with a black and white, and often black and white is a great way to go when the light isn't quite working in your favor, as in this case here. I've also uh, given it a little bit of a sepia tone because it has an old feeling to it, so uh, I thought that kind of went well with, with the castle itself. Not my best uh, image by a long shot, but uh, I was really quite happy with this. I, I like the black and white treatment and, uh, you know, it's just one of those situations where uh, you can either not take any images at all because the light's not that great or try and make the best out of a, a not so great situation. And that was kind of the case here. All right, everybody. So I tried to take shots from kind of sea level here, but it's hard to get the light as uh, the light wasn't working too well the clouds are beautiful now and then the light would hit the castle so that was quite nice but since coming here i've actually bought a new drone i have uh, one of the new mavic pro 2s so i went up high to see if i could get any shots with the new mavic and it, it looks a little bit nicer from up high so i think i got some nice uh, drone shots that i'll show you uh, right now
I've been using drones for several years now, and actually my very first drone was an Inspire One Pro with an X5 camera, so the quality was exceptional. The biggest problem with the Inspire was its weight. Uh, whenever I used it, I had to use it either on its own, or if I wanted to go out and, and take images with my still camera, then I would have to go out with that and not the drone, because the, the two combined, it was just too much weight to carry. And then of course, as I got it more and more into uh, video with uh, YouTube, I decided to forego the, the photography with the drone and went with the Mavic Pro. And uh, I've been using that for a couple of years now for uh, mostly uh, video. And then of course the Mavic Pro 2 came out with the larger sensor. And uh, of course now I have the best of both worlds. My initial reasons for getting into a little bit of aerial photography wasn't so much for getting really high shots up in the mountains or anything like that is more to do with just getting a few meters higher than say eye level and Castle Stalker is an excellent example of that standing there at eye level the castle looks neat but I think it looks way better if you just get a few meters higher so you're looking down on it that way you can get the islands behind it you can also get the mountains and it just gives it a lot more depth than say eye level. Using a drone for this type of subject, uh, I thought was just perfect. All right, so this is my friend Paul, Paul Thompson, uh, Thompson without a P. He has his own YouTube channel, so you go check it out. I'll leave a link down below. So what do you think, Paul? Yeah, yeah, Ooh. definitely. It's, it's colder today, that's for sure. Where, where do you want to go? Where do you want to head to now? Should we head back up to Glencoe and see what that's like? Yeah. So, on the way to uh, from Glencoe, there's some uh, all these gullies with uh, some streams going through them, and it looks like there's some trees. I love this. I love the waterfalls and the streams, but it's nice to get a few trees in there. Yeah, I think so. Definitely adds to it a bit more than just a plain waterfall, anyway. Yeah. So, so that's where we're going to head now, and hopefully it's not raining there yeah let's hope so because it's a bit black out this way now cup of tea first why not <laughs> <laughs> cup of tea <laughs> we interrupt this delicious curry moment because we've got an announcement we've only gone and put together a workshop to the isle of malt <laughs> bosh This is going to be six days, six nights. We're going to put you up in accommodation. You're going to be staying in a beautiful place on the Isle of Mull. It also includes... Transportation. Transportation. We're going to drive you around. What else? Food. Yeah, we're going to give you all of your meals. You don't have to pay for a single meal. And what kinds of things will we be shooting, Gavin? We're going to be shooting Bronze Age megalithic standing stones. Absolutely tremendous. We're going to take you to... Fingal's Cave on the Isle of Staffa. Massive basalt columns with crashing waves blasting into that cave. Ooh, <laughs> it's juicy. It sounds exciting. It's very exciting. <laughs> so there's that. What else are we going to be shooting? We're also going to be shooting twisty, gnarly oak forests. Oh. And if the bluebells are blooming, we're going to get some gorgeous bluebell forest shots. What else is there on Malta? There is a really great waterfall with these twisty oak trees around Ooh, it. Oh, that beautiful double drop one. Ooh. Yeah. All you got to do is get yourself to Glasgow. We're going to pick you up there, drive you to the ferry, drive you to the Isle of Mull, and you'll be staying in a beautiful setting for the next six days. And you don't even have to hide in the trunk. Well, if you eat those pickled eggs, again you will. We're making this a really exclusive workshop with only 10 participants. So if you want to get on this workshop, jump on it. And when is it? It's the first week of May 2020. Hope to see you there. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> Predictably, I did have a nice cup of tea that afternoon, but unfortunately, when we got to Glencoe, the weather had turned for the worse. So I think Paul and I ended up spending the afternoon drinking beer and eating haggis in one of the local restaurants. Now, over the next several days, uh, I spent my time photographing uh, near Balahulish, uh, Glencoe, 
and uh, the Isle of Skye. So the next couple of videos will be all about uh, those areas, not necessarily in that order. If you're wondering what happened to his lordship, Lard Castle, well, after the incident of him locking me in the boot for nine hours and uh, the little trouble we had fighting over my trophy, I decided that it might be best if we spent a little bit of time away from each other. So he went off with a group that he picked up in uh, Glasgow and I decided to spend a few days with my buddy Paul just photographing in those areas. Now and then we'd see Gavin and uh, his workshop group so we would hide behind a rock or a tree so he couldn't see us. Just didn't want to cause any trouble. I think that it's best just to, you know, mix company every now and then. everybody thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed this video uh, please be sure to give me a thumbs up if you did and as always if you enjoy the content of my channel please be sure to hit that subscribe button all right until next time thanks ever so much bye for now